Good morning. Let's take a look, look at the front garden. Today is June 11, 2022, and we have some fruit trees already uh, fruiting. So if you are wondering how you can start a garden to save money on groceries, we are going to share what we are doing to reach that same goal. So we have a garden at the front of uh, our house and right now we have white currants that is fruiting but it's not ripe yet and that is white currant close to it we have red currants and let me close the garden well so that we do not get bunny in it so we have red currants and there are a lot a lot of fruit growing there now right yet we have black currant but it was a a car a stem from the mother plant and just digging dug it in the ground and a black current is easy to propagate so that is from the mother plant we might go to that area later so we have raspberry growing from last year cane so raspberry red raspberry will grow on the last year cane in um in spring and then grow on this year cane in fall so right underneath all of that we have chinese yam i have it on the property and then i will just spread the seed around i'll call it the seed but that's the little yams and this is grown here I have not, I'm not, I don't recall putting it here, but again, when I saw the leaves, I know right away that's what it is. And it is a vine. It believed to grow one yam at the, in the ground and have small uh, yams on the vine. I have harvested a small yam before. So we do have raspberries growing along the fence. And this is this year cane. You'll notice it's not producing. It'll produce in fall. This year cane will be green, and last year cane will be brown. And last year cane will have shoot that will produce in uh, like in early summer, and then I'll cut them down, and the green one will produce in fall, and will remain and produce in next year spring. So we do have an apple here that is not doing anything. We have strawberries like low level plant. So pretty much we have fruit trees, we have vegetables, that's a chips and onion. They grow onion in the ground and small onion on top. So I like to eat the leaves and you have to harvest them early in spring because once they start Pro, uh, shooting the main stem that will hold the bubbles they won't focus much attention on the leaves and the leaves will just go this way so yeah you have to harvest them early but I thought I saw some sp strawberries that are ripe so that is here so we have strawberries ripening already so we have to go through the garden to look for them. We do have some wild, some wild plant growing. This is wild lettuce. 
the stem is smooth but the edge is rugged but let's go check fruit trees we are uh, we have column now apple here we have two this one is fruiting you can see if you can see one of the fruit but we have a lot in the garden so so you can see the apples there on it is columnar apple is supposed to just have like one trunk and the fruit will grow around it doesn't make white branches so we have black currant here and black currant is really taking the space here and black currant that i have is like doesn't really need a lot of care so it's growing is uh five feet tall right now and i will say it's quite wide as well and it's not ripening yet so we have strawberries that is ripening and we have a lot of wild lettuce but yes we have tall trees and then we have um shrubs and then we have low level um fruit plants i will call them as well so pretty much they will keep the ground covered we do have chives that is flowering a lot of egyptian onion and sorrow that is flowering as well and we use sorrow to replace spinach and lettuce and this is parsnip that is flowering don't know why you're approach I, let, I plant them and then i let them go to seed and let them fall back and they have been in the ground ever since so that strawberry is right there too so i just had to come and with the kids and go through the garden and find them here we have honey berry so we have two plants you need two plants for pollination and they are pretty much at the edge of the garden and i don't think they are known to be tall trees but one of them is really for the past two years is really growing and they are about five feet tall right now and they are producing a lot for the past two years the fruit will be green and i noticed that the fruit on old um branches not the new one not the, those grow uh, grow this year so and one thing i noticed for them is the the fruit is underneath the leaves you have to actually look for them i don't know if that's the way they protect themselves from birds or what i'm not sure so that's the green fruit but they start ripening already so when they are ripe they are purple and july 11 and that's one of the early that we could start harvesting already so we have this one is really ripe so you have to actually look for the fruit to find them but we do have a lot of fruit it's pretty much like looking from below up to see them that's that's the best way to describe them and they are pop published but i think they are known to be high in utter oxidant that you'll find in blueberries that's what gives them that color so this one is the second one and is ripe as well so 
Next, so I'll blow our honey berries. We have um, Concord grape that is fruiting. Is this one the Concord grape? Yes. Concord grape that is fruiting, but it's not quite there yet. I should be able to find the tag for it. But yes, they have, I, in spring, I will trim the vine down. So I pretty trim it down this spring. We do have um, asparagus here leaning down, but they show from there. So a few feet away from Concord, we have, oh, that's a blueberry tag here but we have seeded concord and that's this one here and they are fruiting as well right next to it we have a plum tree and that's the first year the plum tree flowered and is fruiting so we can see the fruit and it it does have quite a bit of fruit for being the first time and the tree is not tall quite, maybe 10 11 feet tall But I have to come and try to remove the grape vine uh, tentacle, I should call it, away from the tree. They tend to wrap around it, around the branches. And uh, it's something I'm not a big fan of. So let's see if we'll be able to uh, like to go that route. But we yeah, are just going to go back. But yes, can you start your own garden to save money in groceries? Yes, you can. You just have to know your way around it. And I have, for us, we like perennials, vegetables. We have sorrel, we have onion, we have garlic. And this is garlic that they see in the ground year around. And thumbs to thumbs, I will have some in summer, and then I'll free them apart and then pull them back in the ground where I want them quite away. And in fall, they will grow. I don't wait fall to plant them. And they stay in the ground year around. If I don't want to propagate, I just leave them where they are. And the one that I propagate, I don't even go through the whole garden. I just try to see where they, I have a large clump and see if I can put some somewhere that I don't have them and I eat the greens raw or cooked and just leave the bulb in the ground year around and you can plant fruit trees fruit trees take take years to um, to start producing so it's good to put them in the garden early and over time you won't have to purchase fruits from the grocery store you just harvest your own and learn to preserve them for winter use so we have a lot of garlic and a lot of onion we don't buy garlic we don't buy onion anymore from the grocery store so here we have an apple and let's go this route and we eat some of our wild uh, plants as well like dandelion lamb squatter 
so those are edibles so here we have um, blueberries and you can see one plant boy has quite a bit on it and right underneath it we have a lot of garlic here so that's what I'm talking about when I have so much I can come and dig some out in someone when they turn brown when they turn brown it's kind of hard for me to find them because i mulch a lot i don't water the garden so they can just blend in with the mulch but yes i'll dig them out and just plant them where i don't have them but they are the one with the flat leaves you can see them quite a bit i have soft neck and hard neck and this is a hard neck it is ready to start shooting out that will have bubbles at the top the small garlic at the top that's another one there as well that will have small bubbles at the top and they fall down and they will grow as well so you can see the baby ones here and the one that has that has been here for a while so yeah they are pretty much you know underneath the fruit trees i don't plant fruit trees in one area vegetables in there in or uh, in the, uh, another area i just plant them together and this is passionate so we are i don't know if you'll notice it but we have this is an apple tree and the apple tree is called wealthy apple and i purchased my fruit trees from burnt ridge and um one, one uh, green world nursery or something like that the blueberry right next to it is norland blueberries out of all the areas that all the Companies that I purchased fruit trees from Burnt Ridge is the first one that I would recommend. The second one is Green World Nurseries. Those are good. And I like the fact that they will tell you the different nutrient bene health benefits from that you can get from um, eating the fruit from you know the fruit trees you are trying to purchase. That is more a speciality from burnt wheat and one green world will tell you more. I think yeah, this thing that's one green world nurseries. That one will tell you more how much you can harvest pound wise of fruit trees when the tree reach maturity. So that is wealthy apple producing fruit for the second year. And this year it has more last year was two apples but we didn't eat them they disappear from the tree so have this one and then i have this one so they are the tree is not that huge or anything that's the main tree and i like to keep a spreadsheet of fruit trees that i purchased when i planted them as well so that i can go back to pull down when they first fruited so right next to them we have but just few feet away from the plum tree and the plum tree is past the wire that's the main trunk you can see from there that's the that's the plum tree but we have autumn olive autumn like the way that you know the season autumn olives and if it, it flowered this spring so i think it's going to fruit it fruited last year, at least I saw it last year. So it's going to fruit again this year. I'm not seeing anything on it. Those flower fell already. It is, it has good health benefits. So I have that. And another good thing about it is, is a nitrogen fixer. So having them in the garden with the other vegetables is just going to help with that and i have i think this is a wild grape 
having too many of it around, I had to go around and cut them down. But we have that um, Chinese yam. That was the original spot that I planted. And I will harvest and just propagate around. Um, now that I'm thinking, yeah, because I saw it earlier, but I was just wondering, the leaves is different, but I think it tend to be this way down and then more hard shapes as it grows or something, I'm not sure, but that's the shape of it. And I just planted along the fence, but it seems to be, I think last year when they fruited, those baby yams just fell around here or something because now I have a bunch of it growing on the growing down here. I think that's this one as well. So yeah. Rhubarb Victoria I believe it's called rhubarb is here flowering. But yeah, is those type of fruit trees we have at the front. We do have some at the back as well, but we are not going to go through the back in this video. But yes, you can plant whether it's your front yard or your back, you can if you have a little land on your property, you can plant some fruit trees and some vegetables or just vegetables or just fruit trees, whichever works for you, depending on how much you spend on those, it will, while you can plant yourself, over time you'll have enough supply from it that you won't have to purchase it from the store anymore. And at that point, how much you spend on, on that particular item, you can save it to spend on something else you do not buy and grocery price goes up every year so you can still keep your grocery budget the same but by growing some of the things you can grow you'll be able to save money to grow to purchase while you do not grow and the land the property is about 10,000 square footage, but I use a, a good size amount, a good size for the garden. So the, pretty much the whole front yard is fenced in for the garden. I, I saw some red currant here, so tells me that it's start to fly, to to wipe so pretty soon we will harvest them but yes that's how you grow your own food to lower your grocery bill so we like to set our grocery budget for 300 a month and that includes 150 for um, food stable uh, staple food and food and non-food items sixty dollars for fruits and ninety dollars for meat so by growing our own fruits the goal is that amount sixty dollars for fruit could be saved and that 150 for food we will be able to not purchase everything we purchase and right now we do not purchase spinach or lettuce onion or garlic because we have things in the garden to replace them for us and we do not water our garden we mulch we fall leaves or uh, wood chips, those are fruity and you know, so we do not water the garden and we 
we don't really spend time on onion. So when you start your garden, it's good to plant some onion so that you can start harvesting few things while you are waiting on your perennials to establish, to establish. But um, even if you are planting onions, it's good to let them go to seed and harvest your own seed so that you do not keep purchase, you do not purchase those seeds year after year. This is dandelion. We harvest them for eating, like lettuce or for cooking. So, and we have garlic mustard. And garlic mustard, we use it in salad and or oh, in cooking as well. And that's a wild plant. But when you plant perennials, they take some to establish but then you are not going to keep buying those seeds year after year. You purchase them once and you just learn to propagate what you have. Soros, I propagate from the shoot that will come from the stem at some point. The seed as well, I let them go to seeds. And we have the, even the fruit trees. Some of them you'll be able to propagate, like the black currant. The mother plant is the one that I show you. The mother plant is somewhere there, right straight ahead. But I cut so many from it to plant around at the front and at the back. So that's the mother plant. And I planted one there, and the one that I show you earlier by the um white and red currants so when you have those fruit trees it's good they takes years to produce but you can plant strawberries raspberries and blackberry this is blackberry and it's going to fruit this year you can see all those fruit on it all those is going to flower so it's going to fruit so those will take about a year or two to start producing so you can harvest some fruit from those while you are waiting on you know your fruit trees to start producing so those those are different layers of fruit trees you can introduce to your garden and they have different time period to start producing some the berries will produce earlier than the fruit trees they won't produce a lot a lot of fruit unless you have a lot of them but they will produce and the fruit trees that tend to be tall will produce many pounds of fruit as well so you have to think about the fruit trees the fruit you purchase from the grocery store so that you can introduce some of those trees in addition to the exotic one that are hardy to your son that's how i introduce some current Octon olive, gummy, honey berries. You don't find them at the grocery store, but they have health benefits. And the honey berry has about the same health benefit as blueberries. And they are doing well in my garden compared to blueberries that I have in my garden. And the octon olive is known to have antioxidant that can prevent prostate cancer and gummy. I think gummy is high in um, high in vitamin C or uh, leucopene. I'm not sure. I'm not going to. But I think the same antioxidant you'll find in carrot, but I'm not sure. I have to look for it. But yes, and they are nagumi and at autumn olive they are nitrogen fix, fix so i have gummy at the back and i have autumn olive at the front so having them you know the fish nitrogen for the you know for the garden for the vegetables and trees in the garden so yeah and it does take some money when you start you wanted to fence the garden it takes some money you need to fence it from bunny and deers and the fruit trees cost money, so you do not want bunny and deer to damage them for you. But, yeah, once you get those done, over time, you will be able to harvest enough to break even and to make it worth 
having the garden uh, which means you will start really saving and again growing your own food that will be the healthiest food you'll eat because it, it it doesn't take you long to just get out harvest them and go back in and serve yourself so they are fresh they are natural and they are organic we do not fertilize we do not water we do not use pesticide they just grow natural thank you so much for watching i'm afiavi liberman creators of youtube our liberman consulting llc youtube channel and nina soap that come our blog we are conscious about natural remedies as well so we try to add some to the garden that's where the elderberry comes to play so we have about two varieties at the front and two varieties at the back so those are medicinal you can make syrup out of it out of the fruit can it and have it for flu season in winter for instance and we have you know the wild lettuce that i talked about mentioned earlier there is one that has back the back has is prickly compared to the edges and that one is wild lettuce too but i think that one is edible but the one that i showed you before is medicinal i think it's like a pain reliever i have so many in the garden but there seems to be one area of the garden than other but that's this one i have not searched a lot but it seems to be used for pain so the back is soft but it has the edges like that tend to look like um tend to look like thistle or dandelion when it's small but if you pay close attention to where the color is different dandelion green is different from green color is different from this green color and dandelion does not grow that tall so it tend to I, it, I don't know if it's in the same family or not but again have not really searched a lot so you get to know the wild plant in your garden instead of fighting them cutting them down you can use them to mulch or you can use them for medicinal purposes or for eating and this is yellow duck i think the leaves is edible the roots is medicinal but i don't use them but they grow around same family as sorrel that we use i believe they are in the same family so and so other wild plant in the garden that i'm not I don't know much about so thank you so much for your time if you are wondering if you want to start your garden but you don't know yeah you can start just a little bit you know and go from there I just want to have an approach that is hands off yes I need to tend the garden but it's not about weeding is when I cut those wild plants is too much or to harvest for eating the one that are edible or to mulch so i don't view them as a bad thing in the garden necessarily i don't till the garden i have since their year around so i don't till the garden and in spring when people are ready to plant i'm ready to harvest or i'm um, i'm already harvesting from the garden because i had to harvest the egyptian onion very quickly because they will start producing bubbles and when they do that they are not going to spend time producing green leaves for me. So those, you know, and then we have garlic here.